Hello everyone, I'm the Mole Man, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be going through my footage from day one of Thanet Parkway. Isn't that exciting? I thought we'd go for a little bit of a different vibe. Nice chill music, bit of a voiceover. I didn't really have a plan for what I was going to film on the day, so this is just a compilation of everything I filmed, including my journey there, which is why we're starting at Snodden Station. I didn't get up at the crack of dawn for this. Didn't really feel the need to, but uh, you'll see why. You'll definitely see why as well. So that's, yeah, that's the trains just waiting for the usual half hourly service to Strood. All good fun. However, the weather on this day was not the best. It was already looking pretty bleak, as you can see as we pan to the skies. It was grey. It was looking like it was going to be a bit of a icky day and that it was but it was still a good day it was a very much a good day and so here comes 375 ready to whisk me away to strood at the blistering average speed of about a snail but it's fine it's all good it's all good i do like my uh electro stars 375 310 there and uh, as we depart and the other one pulls into the other platform, there we go, we get a nice view of the tickets. Snodland to Thanet Parkway, which I'm looking to frame, I'm looking to frame. Every time I'm on the Mubby Valley, always checking to see, will something go over the bridge? Will something go over the bridge? But not today, not today. With a quick pan to see Rochester Castle and the bridges over the Medway, we are very quickly arriving into Strood, passing under the Chatter Main Line and crawling in at the wonderful 15 miles an hour. See, it's, uh, it's halted indeed. I'll let you enjoy the approach into Strood Platform 3. Another look at some of the boards. Trains galore at Strood. Though we're not catching either of these two. We might be catching that one though. The 1044 to Ramsgate. But it was 700 time first. And the footage is a bit choppy changey here because people do love walking in the way, don't they? Oh yes they do. But I'm always going to try and film the 700 when I see one. Would look better in pink, don't you think? I certainly think so. And a surprise I wasn't expecting, about to come crawling round the corner. A nice at least yes move. You can see it in the distance at 376. It's a scheduled move that happens every now and then, because they are moved down to places like Ramsgate for more heavy maintenance than can be done at places like Slate Green. So yeah, we just get a nice little bonus shot of a 376 passing through Strood. Which is uh, nice. 012. Imagine if this was a train bow. I really hope these get refurbished at some point. They're looking so tired. Need to see them in blue with some better interiors. Fingers crossed it happens sooner rather than later. And off it goes. And before it's even had time to really think about even being out of shot, the action continues because the uh, 375 I arrived on will depart and crawl its way back out and onto the Medway Valley line.
and as it departs, a 395 pulls in. It's the, the non-stop action you get every half an hour or so is just something to behold. Although, pity anyone who is on that 395 wants to go to Paddock Wood, who now has to wait half an hour. The 2022 timetable is like that, and it is not ideal, if you ask me. Not ideal at all. And there's our train, the 1044 to Ramsgate. Note the non-stop between Gillingham and Faversham. That makes for a nice run. However, there's a bit of an odd moment. You see it's currently 1035. And out of nowhere, here it is. Because this service is a special service, one, it's a 465. But two, it only runs once a day. And, rarely enough, on weekdays now. But... They had to sort out a bit of an issue because it wasn't actually announced that it was coming. It just appeared and disappeared off the boards, which is always good fun. But anyway, we're on board now and uh, getting ready to depart as a 700 pulls in. See, it's non-stop action here. And it really is. Doors are being closed. Love the slam. And we will be away on our way to Ramsgate. Ish. You'll see. But I'll let you enjoy the views of Strood and Rochester as we depart. There go the track joint sounds that I recite in every train sim video. Such a hefty metal sound, I love it. Another look of Rochester Castle. Love the historical buildings in Rochester, and it's a place I've visited a lot in my time. And we can just see the spire of the cathedral in the background there, which is very nice. And now we are departing Gillingham. Skipped a little bit of time there. But this is the start of the non-stop run to Faversham, which is nice. And we will see some of the speed that we get up to on this little run. But I do like the departure from Gillingham, going under that old footbridge that we will see shortly. And of course going past the depot. In hindsight, I wish I was sat on the other side. Because none other than the 376 we saw earlier was moving through the sidings of the depot as we passed by. But alas, I picked the wrong side of the train. Oh well. Oh well indeed. And now we are racing along the four track section between Raynham and Newington. One of my favourite little nerdy bits of info is the downfast that we're on right now has got two third rails, one on each side. 
they thought it would be good for uh, electrical pickup in bad weather. Did it make a difference? Not in the slightest, but it's still there to this day. And we fly past Newington Station, which is exclusively on the slows. And as all the tracks collapse back into two, a bit of a bumpy junction. I do like a bumpy ride of a 465. It's, it's good fun. It's definitely good fun. Skipping time once again, we are now beyond Faversham, and one of the best bits of any journey is when you get to go along and get a glimpse of the one thing that you want to see, the sea. There it is, there's the Kent coast, which the, uh, the Ramsgate branch of the Chatham mainline meets a couple of times, which is always nice. But as you can see, it's, it's looking a bit murky out there still, that it is. What can you do? And this is us approaching Margate. And we'll see on the other side of the station. There's a 395. Funny that. Now, you see, this 465 is only going to Ramsgate. And Thanet Parkway is served by 395s from Margate to St Pancras. However, I didn't really want to have to dash across all the platforms at Margate. So here we are approaching to Broadstairs, where I thought, same platform interchange, much easier. Much easier. So we're going to be, very briefly, getting off at Broadstairs and awaiting the 395 here. Open up the doors and step onto the platform. I love Broadstairs, that I do. And we get to watch the 465 depart. It's penultimate station of the day. Ding ding. And off it goes. I would have been really annoyed if that was 465919, as that one has got rheostatic braking enabled. Fun fact. We love Broadstairs, that we do. This is the road that heads down towards the coast. Walked down it many times. This was my coastal destination of choice. But today we are staying firmly planted on the platform for about a few minutes. And here we go, the first time I'm seeing Thanet Parkway on a board, the 1156 via Canterbury West to St Pancras. New station, first new station in eight years in the Southeastern network. And here's the 395. This is the same one that we passed at Margate just a few minutes ago. That it is. It'll crawl in, we'll get on, and then we will be at Thanet Parkway. I'm impressed in the board's ability to know where the station is. When they moved Rochester, that caused a right fuss for a few months. Nice to hear the passengers talking about it as well. But here we are, on the approach into Thanet Parkway. Lots of trees and denseness, as you would normally expect. And it all just 
vanishes away to reveal the underpass and the stairs of a brand new station. And here we are. Lots of enthusiasts. I'll wave if any of them are you. It's nice to see a few people out and about for this. I mean, I was getting here at midday. A lot of people turned up at 9 o'clock in the morning. Some people were mad enough to be on the first train at like 04.50. I like sleep, so I decided to not do that. But here we are crawling in. I have some thoughts on this station. We've got some time to talk about it. But it's a new station. I'm, I'm going to like it, aren't I? Obviously. And I step onto a platform for the first time. I always love that concept of being somewhere, standing somewhere for the first time. I had it with the Elizabeth line as well. You're standing somewhere where previously it was just dirt. I find that fascinating. And the action kicks off immediately. We watch our 395 depart. 395016. Regency Javelin vibes. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, we get to see the interesting interesting quirks of a brand new station. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But there goes the 395. And with a quick pan. Nice look at the station. Welcome to Thanet Parkway. The immediate thing you'll notice is the pattern of trains. Three trains an hour pass through here, but only one stop in each direction. So this is the Ramsgate to St Pancras via Dover, which just goes racing straight through. That it does. Followed by a 375. With a nice horn for the passengers up on the platform there. Again, doesn't stop Charing Cross via Ashford. Here's a look at the exterior. Thanet Parkway. Very minimalist, very obtrusive. Nothing that really, you know, it just stands out up on an embankment. It's a bit odd, but it's it's not too bad. And here's, here's the parkway in question. Something like 270 spaces. The idea being, park your car, get the train. We'll see how that goes in due course, I suppose. Interesting refresh rate on the monitors here, but this is where you can see all the departures. Again, look, hourly service in each direction ish. Considering the station was built and the line adjusted to keep the speeds the same, it feels odd that more trains don't stop here. The train now two. More non stop action. Surprise, surprise. For the nice little uh, artistic shot there. Notice how it says on the board as well, ticket office facilities are not available here. There's a big debate going on about ticket office staff at the moment. And I think building a station without that provision says more than it needs to, which is a shame. Interesting design for the footbridge. And I saw these circles and I thought, camera shot. So here we are at a nice tight zoom, looking down the line back towards Ramsgate. And you can see now that it's starting to rain. The weather is getting pretty bad. And it was pretty bad all day. The rain followed me. What can I say? Yes, I thought this was quite an interesting perspective to watch a train depart. I like that about a new station, finding new ways to look at trains. There it goes. Nice, look, nice view of the red signal in the shot as well. I've been filming a lot of these boards, but I think it's cool and it shows a new type of design. It shows you the stopping pattern, a visual representation of the length of the train, and some customer information, which is nice. It even gives you information about London Overground running as well. But considering it takes over an hour to get to London, what it says isn't that valid by the time you get there necessarily. Excited enthusiasts, there's a train coming. I wonder what it will be. That's right, it's another 395. Of course it is.
Yay for tones! And there it goes. More 395 action. It gets pretty repeatable. Trains at Thanet Parkway is not something with many surprises hiding. Unless of course something special comes through here at some point, which I'm sure it will. I am sure it will. I think there should be a Thanet Thunder rail tour. Encourage people to drive there to get on a rail tour if you know what I'm saying. You'll notice as well a lot of the drivers that are stopping here are crawling in very slowly. And that's probably because it's a new station and they've got a mental note they've actually got to stop here. Because, you know, it's it's not the slowest speed through here. And you've got to remember to start stopping here now. Providing you are one of the hourly services that does stop here. I love the little depot whistle of a 395. Glorious. 395029. We might see that one later. Who knows? I'm sad to say there was no train bow on this day. It would have been nice to see that on Thanet Parkway's debut. Off it goes. And would you look at that? Another 395. Going a bit faster this time though. Nice to get a good view from right down the end of the platform. This is facing in the Canterbury direction. That it is. Now time to finally see a 375 from up here. Seven coaches, I think. A bit different. And again. Go straight through. I feel like a lot of the potential of the station is missing in its lack of service. I really do think that. But it's time for a little 360 of the uh, this end of the station. This is where the emergency exits are. And you've got some nice greenery. And the uh, road bridge up ahead and the road which goes off to the side is the road, I think, that serves the car park. You'll notice there's no sort of like overhead lights, it's all strip lighting on the soundproof areas. And all the shelters are sort of recessed into little concaves of that soundproofing wall. But anyway, more 375 action, more rain, all good fun. thought I'd hide in one of the shelters you can see the rain it was really coming down but what a way to christen a new station it's not a British station if it doesn't get rained on now up the other end again the uh, the Ramsgate end for more 395s <laughs> Two. So there's a shot of the same signal there which is nice And we have a stopping service again crawling in I'd imagine because the platform is also quite narrow which has been of some debate and quite a few enthusiasts you'd want to come in slower anyway but yeah you need to make sure that you know where to stop the other uh, markers are right down the end on this platform so all the trains will stop right down at the business end bit of a wide angle lens to fit it in but it's all good and we get to watch a departure 021, very good. And newly grounded rail, grinded rail, however you want to say it, newly ground rail. Makes it sound a bit like a braille unit, which is good fun. Very interesting quirk of fresh railway. And here's the lift. Keep a, keep a note of that. We'll, we'll see the lift again later, not in the way you expect, but this is nice, a little little sort of sheltered area near, near each of the staircases, which is nice. 
And here we see just how little is around the station. There's Cliff's End. It has a single bus in the near area. And that's it. That is pretty much it around here. Nice again. Another artistic shot as a 395 pulls in. Love it. Bit of left to right action. And you'll see that even though it's a six car train, the six car marker is a little bit further up than you'd expect. So even though this is where the entrance and exit is, the whole train blissfully slides on by. And with no overhead canopies, you get out of the train, you get wet. Another 395 fast for Dover. Little cheeky three-tone there. I've noticed a lot of horns seem to be getting a bit softer these days. It's a bit odd. And it is followed immediately, more or less, by a 375 doing very much the same thing. That thing being not serving a brand new station. And now we get a look of the same thing happening in the other direction. It's all very repeatable here, as I said. Loving the sparks and third rail kick up there. All good fun. Three nine five. I must say, the soundproofing works in both directions. If you're stood quite near it, you, it was really weird. The one ear sort of gets deafened by it. And it does. Again, more sparking. Love it. Pretty sure that's 395002. And now I thought I'd take you for a walk from one end of the station to the other involving stairs and using legs and knee work Ugh, horrible but it's fine it's for the cause damn it as you can see steps they do stair things it's 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 a footbridge sort of i say because the railway's raised you cross underneath the railway using what i'm pretty sure is an existing bridge which we will see very shortly And down on the ground. Platform two. There we go. Lift to platform two. So you can see one of the little self-service ticket machines there. One of the minimalist ones. They serve you the bare minimum of available tickets. Again, controversial opinions abound. Here's the old the old bridge which you get to walk under. You'll notice as well the tactile paving which is sort of arrowed in a direction to help people who need it walk in that direction. But on the platforms, it's also in a bit of an awkward place to successfully put a ramp down and navigate on and off of a train. So there's some wins and some losses on the accessibility front. Again, we get a nice look at the car park. That we do. There were actually people genuinely using the station, not just enthusiasts, which for day one was nice to see. It'll be interesting going through here in weeks, months to come, how that actually goes long, longer term. And to look back up at the main line. Very, very nice. station from this angle does look quite nice a little bit soulless but nice i can't complain too much and as if by magic there's a 395 and as that departs it means i'm here for like another hour because they're hourly but it's all good i love the angle you get of a train like this i can see if like a steam train's coming through here i can see quite a few people setting their cameras up to get shots like this 
maybe. It's, it's unique. It's different. Definitely different. And with the 395 gone, up we go on to platform two. And uh, proof of two things here. One, that people are actually using the station. Because when I get to the footbridge, there's people coming down it. So, uh, cough, jump cut, cough. Also a bit of a wider angle so we can properly see the stairs as we come up. Yeah, again, you can see those circles on the side. I mean, it means it's got a nice sort of airy flow to it. You know, you're not in a cramped, heavily condensed, warm, sticky environment. And not much rain gets in. On a day like this, it was tested quite well that certain areas are quite well protected from that sort of thing. Which is good, which is good. And up the last few steps, nearly tripping over. We're all good. That's it. Up. And we're up here. Back onto the platform. Platform two. Now you may be wondering, why did all those people use the stairs? It's day one. Remember the lift? It's broken. Credit to the engineers. They fixed it pretty quickly. But this did make me chuckle. Day one. And the lift don't work. Oh, wow. Well. What can you do? And we can see now the start of the evening peak starting to creep in with our first 12 car service. This should be quite a good display of how 12 coaches fits on to the whole station. Nice to see a bit of 12 car action, that it is. And you'll see some of the 375s start to get a bit longer as well, the ones that pass through, because everything's getting a bit longer to head up to London, ready for all the people to head back in the evening peak. And as the last coach crawls its way into the platform, 021 there, we see that most of the platform is taken up. It's a very tight threshold in terms of how you fit in the platform there. Built it to spec. That is definitely what they did. And a nice zoomed in departure for something a little bit different. That it is. Again, the station looks so odd from this angle, having no lights or anything high up. It's all flat and a little bit claustrophobic. Speedy 375. Triple trouble. Triple trouble. There's three of them head towards London. And more 375s. You can see that everything's heading to London, ready to head back. I'm standing in one of those little recessed areas next to one of the shelters. Poised to get back in the shelter because it's raining. Oh, the rain. I believe this is the Dover Priory to Faversham service, which then joins on to another Dover Priory to Victoria service, and then they head up together towards Victoria, funnily enough. Again, hiding. Horrible rain. I got soaked. But what can you do? What can you do? Tis the way of the UK. That it is. And for a nice little closing shot of Thanet Parkway's lovely, lovely wall with its wording and the 395 pulling in. This is the 395 that is the start of my journey home. Spent about four hours here in total. Which, to get rained on, is, you know, it is what it is. I got some nice shots. I got to see a new station. I got to get a little goodie bag with a Southeastern logo on it and some Southeastern goodies. Including some cookies, which is nice. And even a gift card for Costas or something. Like, it's... They, they looked after people who turned up. That they did. And it's 395029. I said we'd probably see it again, didn't I? And there it stops. 
And so with the closing of the doors, we get to say goodbye to Thanet Parkway. But not before we run over to the other side of the train, because we heard there was an announcement for something fast coming through. And I'm not going to miss that, am I? And we start to move. Wave goodbye to Thanet Parkway. The first day of the rest of its life. We'll see how it goes. That we will. And there goes the 375. I wasn't going to quite leave it there. I thought we'd do a little bit of on the way home shots too. So at 700 at Strood, can't argue with a shot like that. And it has a bit of a twist, which I was not expecting to see. you may know, ever since the platforms were extended at Strood, eight car trains stop all the way down the end, as far away from civilization as possible. But it seems they've now moved the stop markers, because it's slowing down a lot earlier than normal, and the rear of the train now more or less stops in line with the little shelter. Positivity in progress, yay! More 395 action, you say? Well, why not? It's nearly time for me to be heading home. I've got to have a bit more 395. Especially on the slow crawl and F Bender Street. And there it goes 395026. Very nice. More 395 action? You bet. You bet. That's the joy of a weekday. A little bit more than a weekend. Which is always very nice to see. Including what's going to take me home. 395 to Maidstone West. You can see the clouds are still rolling in. It's just It was just a miserable day, but a good day. A good, miserable day. And departing. 024. Track joints galore. Twelve coaches as well, which is always nice to see. There we go. Nose to nose action. And it's so slowly crawling in. And behind this, which we can't really see, the 375 is pulling in and terminating a platform three. It's like a full circle. But I'm not getting that home. I'm getting a 395 home, because that's my sort of style. That it is. And as if by magic, I'm nearly home when the sun's out. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a bit different. It has been a bit different. I, I've liked it. I thought it was something a bit different to do. As the 395 departs. Any second now. I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for watching this one. And I will see you in the next video.